According to the NYPD, around 3 o'clock Saturday, a year-old boy was involved in some sort of altercation down in 137th Street City College Station on the northbound 1 train. Police say the fight between the teenagers started here on the street, close to this park at 138th Street and Broadway at 3 p.m. Saturday. Police say the brawling teens then ran into this nearby subway station, and it ended in bloodshed on the platform of the northbound number one subway train. And I see the kid bleeding, bleeding from the, from the side of the waist. And then when he fell, then the police was coming downstairs. They grabbed him and ran with him inside the ambulance to try to save his life. They, he did a great job, but I think it was too late. The Manhattan DA's office has now identified year-old Kelvin Martinez as the person suspected of stabbing Reyes and say the two are part of rival gangs. July 9th, 2022. An upcoming rapper by the name of Ethan Reyes, aka Nadi Osama, was with his brother, Didi Osama. But that day wasn't simply a regular time spent together. It would be the very last time they would see each other alive, for Nadi Osama would lose his life moments later. It was after midday. The clock was ticking after 2 p.m. Nadi Osama and Didi Osama parted ways, thinking that just like any other day, they'd be reunited after going about their individual business. But soon, that reality was shattered to pieces. Just before 3 p.m., Nadi Osama and two friends were walking at 137th Street and Broadway when they came across someone by the name of Kelvin Martinez, who was on his way into the train station to catch an uptown train. According to reports, what lit the match about the events, which were about to erupt, was a gang feud between Nadi Osama's affiliation and those of Martinez. The tensions were escalating over recent weeks, and it was at a boiling point. With Nadi spotting his rival, it was almost inevitable what would happen next. It's sad that at just such a young age, this was the agenda on their minds. But the streets of New York, in particular Sugar Hill, which is the gang faction Nadi represents, molded him into what he became. A sad reality, but a reality that exists and erodes the minds of the youth. The Sugar Hill set falls under the affiliation of the OIs, also known as the original Young Gangsters, and also the alias, the original Youngins. Growing up in the environment of gangs and the lifestyle, it's not surprising Nadi Osama's first reaction was one inspired by injuring or even worse, taking the life of his rival, Martinez. Now, he has the mindset to do harm, and he also got hold of the broomstick as his weapon, which checks off the box for an altercation waiting to happen. Nadi Osama and his friends first got into a heated verbal confrontation with Martinez outside of the subway station. Before things went south, and they proceeded to chase Martinez into the station where they cornered him at the north end of the platform. The teenagers started here on the street, close to this park at 138th Street and Broadway at 3 p.m. Saturday. Police say the brawling teens then ran into this nearby subway station. With nowhere left for Martinez to escape, Nadi Osama and his friends began carrying out the beating they envisioned in their minds. But they failed to factor in the possibility of resistance. And that was the second grave mistake Nadi Osama made other than engaging in the act in the first place. Martinez was armed, and he drew his knife in retaliation to the beating he was receiving, a natural reaction in a fight or flight moment. He would swing at Reyes, AKA Nadi Osama, puncturing him in the abdomen. It was then, one of Nadi Osama's friends is reported to have swung a sharp object at Martinez, which gave Reyes, AKA Nadi Osama, the time he needed to push Martinez onto the train tracks, causing him to fall on his back. Martinez, seeing the distance from the fall as a way to get out of the situation, climbed up and fled the station, leaving a bloody Nadi Osama staggering down the platform 
before collapsing on the staircase. Police officers would receive a call about the stabbing just after 3 p.m., prompting a swift response to the subway station to find a wounded Nahari Osama on a northbound one train platform. He would be rushed to the Mount Sinai Morningside Hospital, where he, unfortunately, succumbed to his injuries. Police say they got the call just after 3 o'clock, and when they got here, they discovered the 14-year-old boy stabbed in the abdomen on the northbound one train platform. They say he was rushed to Mount Sinai, St. Luke's, but unfortunately, it was too late. The stab wound did fatal damage upon piercing into his abdomen, puncturing his liver, dooming the young teenager to a life cut short due to the gang pitting the young against each other. The police presence was immense, given the location of the hit and the busy surroundings, not to mention it was basically broad daylight. The crime scene was cornered off, but that didn't stop concerned citizens from swarming to the location of the altercation. A press conference was held by law enforcement in quick succession to inform the public of their findings to try and erase the fear of the suspect being on the loose. NYPD Transit Chief Jason Wilcox would state that they have surveillance footage that shows the incident clearly and the suspect description is known and being searched for. MTA camera footage from that station provided clear images of individuals who were present at the time of the incident. Officers immediately began their search for the suspect and one officer noticed something that fitted the description of Martinez on West 173rd Street in Broadway. With the assistance of Martinez's mother, officers were able to arrest him without any altercation. It was there they were better able to examine Martinez, but they found he had suffered injuries to his back and two puncture wounds to his left hip. He was treated at the hospital and also interviewed by NYPD detectives and DA investigators. That individual was stopped and taken into custody. At the time, he was bleeding from his back and abdomen and brought to an area hospital to be treated for wounds to his left hip area. Two weapons, a knife and a broomstick wielded in the altercation was found by law enforcement and seized as evidence for the case. Martinez was charged for the hit and criminal possession of a weapon. Good evening, Jessica. That year old suspect is being charged with and criminal possession of a weapon. New York City Mayor Eric Adams was coincidentally in the area promoting an event promoting public safety for children and teens when he caught wind of the tragedy that occurred, after which he shared his thoughts to news reporters on the scene. New York City Mayor Eric Adams was briefed on the crime while incidentally attending an event promoting public safety for children and teens. And so being here today uh, and hearing about the stabbing really highlights why we need the lights on in schools like this so our children can have a safe space. He would then take to Twitter to try highlighting the situation plaguing the streets of New York along with his meeting with the community to aid in finding a solution to the bloodshed. Didi Osama, Nadi Osama's brother, would be devastated by his brother's passing and couldn't help but place the blame on himself for not being there to change the outcome. Let's go to the block. Let's call me say, yo, Nadi got stabbed block. I said, what? Like, I was just with him. Yeah. Like, that's why I was sad, like, bro, shit, still thinking, like, what if I stayed? Like, if I was really, if I just stayed with him all the time, he'll really be here today, no cop. Well, they were finally gaining traction in the music industry, making a name for themselves in the next rappers up from the Bronx. The fame was right there, but the money and all that came with it meant nothing now that his brother was gone. I supposed to be with bro. It's not with bro, so I don't feel good about it. Nadi Osama's passing affected Didi Osama to the point where he stopped going to school. The vibe was just gone. I I can go to in indoor school after after the situation with my brother and go to school. Really? The two were inseparable. Didi Osama would release two songs dedicated to his slain little brother. The solo track, Letter to Nadi, and a group track titled 
E4N, which meant everything for Nadi. It featured their bro, J Star Bala, along with other affiliates. From that point forward, DD Osama, along with his loved ones of Nadi, like Sugar Hill D Dot, vowed to keep the legacy of Nadi alive and always be the trio known as the Three Demons. Word to my dad, if, if my son Nadi was here, we would have been the youngest, like, like we would have been. Yo, we still the three, three demons. Yeah, still with the three demons. Nadi with us. Still, with still with us. Three demons still. Nadi Osama was well respected in Sugar Hill, even at his young age, and retaliation was guaranteed for anyone that chose to disrespect his passing or speak ill of his name. We move everything for Nadi. Speak on, bro. You gonna meet him, nigga? What a bro, nigga? I said go beat you. Beat him. Boop, boop, boop. Daddy got knocked out of socks, nigga. Everything sucked. Sadly, in the gang culture, that was their world. That only incited their rivals to taunt them by laughing at Nadi Osama's murder. One of the most unremorseful acts that came from rivals was the creation of a song titled Nadi Bop. The track was recorded by Kyle Rich and featured other rappers by the names Tata and Jen Carter. The lyrics detailed the hit, but also came with the dance that imitated Nadi being stabbed. To add insult to injury, it went viral. Social media giant TikTok tricking innocent civilians into mimicking the dance, not knowing it was disrespecting Nadi Osama. From kids to teachers, NBA players to even the cops, everyone was playing the song and doing the dance. They gotta do it like this. Don't, don't drop my shit. Nadi, Nadi bopping. Punching my hips. Like, come here, gotta do it like this. From the time of Nadi's passing to the present, Didi Osama has taken it up a notch, carrying on his brother's legacy through his career and life. His song has earned him millions of views and streams on streaming platforms. Not to mention, he has achieved a milestone that would have sure made his brother Nadi proud. Major labels like Sony have already been calling Didi Osama into meetings discussing millions to sign him to a record deal. I think you posted a picture of you going to a record label like a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so um, uh, what label was that? Sony. Sony? Okay. The most that can be wished for is that he stays out of the way and doesn't fall into the trap of the gang culture and simply focus on his music. The suspect, Martinez, had his charge reduced to first degree manslaughter. His legal team argued Martinez acted in self-defense as he claimed weeks prior to the altercation he was also assaulted by associates of Reyes, aka Nadi Osama. October 2022, News broke that all criminal charges have been dropped in the case against Martinez. A spokeswoman for the Manhattan District Attorney's Office said that prosecutors were not confident they could disprove beyond a reasonable doubt that Martinez was defending himself when he used his knife against Reyes. The decision was based on factors that include witness interview and video surveillance, she said. Nadi Osama had so much potential. His talent on the mic was undeniable, and everyone knew it, but the lifestyle caught up to him. And in that one moment of making a bad decision, he lost his bright future in the music industry. He was just a teen. But there are so many like him losing their lives without even having a chance to live. Hopefully, his passing doesn't only bring grief, but there's some positivity in the long run by other youths looking at his life and changing their paths down the road. Rest in peace, Nadi Osama.